Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video, we're going to have a look at Consumer Price Index. And Consumer Price Index is, while not the only, it is the primary measure or determinant of inflation in Canada. And it does matter for a whole bunch of reasons. You'll find a lot of contracts and benefits that will make reference to Consumer Price Index. So for example, two that you should know at all levels at any uh, course you might be going through are both Canada Pension Plan and Old Age Security Benefits and all the affiliated benefits, so Guaranteed Income Supplement, the Allowance and so forth, they're all fully indexed to Canada Pension Plan. And that full indexation actually makes them very valuable. So we can't overlook that. And that's something that does get overlooked, honestly. Sometimes when we're looking at these government benefits, sometimes people undervalue that full indexation. And of course, the longer somebody lives, the more the longevity risk that person faces, the more valuable that indexation is. There are other places where it might apply. You might find uh, child and spouse support agreements that rely on CPI and of course lots of domestic or sorry lots of uh, commercial contracts that might have some basis around CPI where you might have a, a fixed monthly amount that's adjusted every year to match inflation or that kind of thing and that will usually refer back to consumer price index as the primary measure of inflation. So what CPI is in Canada CPI is measured by Stats Canada or Statistics Canada. And what they do, they have a basket of about 600 goods. It does vary a little bit and they do a household spending survey so they look at where people are spending their money and then they use that to determine what that basket of roughly 600 goods is and then they do these sort of notional shopping trips in different geographic regions at different times of the year and I say goods, it's goods and services actually and that's designed to sort of capture those most common things that people will buy and there's no particular judgment here as to where people should or should not spend their money so if a lot of Canadians are smoking if the household spending survey shows that enough Canadians are smoking to warrant inclusion in this survey then they will include this and they'll do their best to match the sort of quality of things that people will buy so if you're talking about and there's a very detailed example of actually potato chips on or sorry uh, french fries on the stats can website and it goes through exactly how the bag of french fries that gets into the 600 goods and services basket would be chosen so StatsCan does a, a lot of work around this and actually Statistics Canada is globally recognized as a leader in measurement of these types of uh, this type of data. So in order to generate a useful measurement what happens here going back to 2002 in 2002 StatsCan essentially baselined the CPI and they'll do this from time to time and they baselined it at a value of 100. So everything works from that point of 100. And what happens then is every year they look at that basket of goods and services. And this video is being recorded near the end of 2015. So we don't have the 2015 data available yet. But in 2014, the end of 2014, this value was 125.2. So the index just becomes a, a way to sort of measure this against year over, or measure this as a year over year change. And we can look back to 2013, for example. And at the end of 2013, this value was 122.8. And I'll show this in a moment from the StatsCan website as well. <coughs> So what happens here, we see the change year over year. We would take 125.2 minus 122.8. 122.8 122 
all divided by 122.8. And that's going to give us 2.4 divided by 122.8. And we math that out. That's 1.95%. On the StatsCan website, everything is just done to two or to one decimal place. So on the StatsCan website, that rounds out to two percent, which is correct. So that's what we see as inflation from 2013 to 2014. And this would be the CPI number then, and that's what all of the benefits, anything that would be fully indexed to inflation, would measure that way. Not everything is fully indexed to inflation. You'll find lots of pensions, for example that may only be partly indexed to inflation. So it's pretty common actually to see uh, private sector pensions that are maybe indexed to 60% of inflation. Or another common thing, you'll see a lot of insurance contracts when they have an indexation feature built in, is they'll index fully to CPI to a maximum of a certain percentage like 6%, for example, a lot of cost of living adjustments will fully index the CPI to a limit of 6%. So if inflation were in excess of 6%, then either you wouldn't get that adjustment or in some cases you might be allowed to wait a year to get it. So this is the national survey, national historical data for consumer price index. And we can see this is from the Statistics Canada website. You've got the URL at the top here. and as mentioned in 2002, CRA base or sorry, StatsCan baseline this at 100. So the numbers prior to 2002 were sort of artificial. They would relate back to the 2002 number. We can see what inflation has been year over year, typically around 2%. And 2014, then just as we said, at 125.2, which represented a 2% change from 2013. Now there's lots and lots of data available around CPI. So here we see CPI by item. Now this is the table shows by province, but I've chosen all of Canada here. So this is what we call the all items CPI, which is the one that's most often used. There are other CPI numbers available. You'll hear you'll see here all items excluding food or all items excluding energy. There are some issues sometimes with the measurement of inflation around food and energy. Uh, they're both heavily linked into the commodities market sometimes, and sometimes there are non-consumer demand items that drive those commodities prices. So, so you can see here where inflation doesn't necessarily look the same for every item. So you've got Remember back to 2002 at that baseline level of 100. So we can see that the normal inflation has been 125.2. Food, for example, and shelter have both inflated at higher rates. On the other hand, the stuff you buy around the house has inflated at lower rates. And this is true for a lot of manufactured goods. When we see uh, items here and here, we have had a lot more efficiencies built into uh, the manufacturing and importing processes and those two things have caused those prices to come down. You can see that actually clothing and footwear has dropped in price on an inflationary basis since 2002. Transportation's increased at a little bit faster pace. Health and personal care a little bit slower and recreation, education and reading at a slower pace as well. Alcoholic beverages and we would see some tax impacts here and tobacco products are at a faster pace. So it's, I think, interesting to look at this from that perspective. And this can actually, I think, help us to understand where people are spending their money, where they're more likely to spend more money in the future, where they're more likely to spend less money in the future. And one of the items, actually two items that I see that get, I think, somewhat misrepresented sometimes, at least we have to be careful how we do these things. I see a lot of tendency to want to use a higher inflation rate for healthcare and a higher inflation rate for uh, education and yet we can see on the whole these two things have not increased as much. Now there are some other considerations there so it's not to say that you should be using a lower rate of inflation but you should understand if you're going to use a rate of inflation other than the norm let's say two percent why you're doing that. 
So I hope this has been a useful overview of Consumer Price Index. We've gotten into a little bit of detail on it, hopefully enough that you can understand where this comes from. And it is a, a broadly useful concept to be aware of. It has lots of implications. There are lots of different areas within financial planning where we do have to be aware of Consumer Price Index. Enjoy your continued studies. Thank you very much.